Hello everybody, this is Mr. Ark coming at you over the internet. Welcome, welcome to my classroom. This is a brave new world. Well, uh, I'm doing my best such that uh, you guys can uh, still learn. And so I thought carefully about uh, my first lesson online and so uh, it's going to be about encryption because I have a surprise for you all and um, so I think I'll begin the lesson but before I do uh, I just wanted to make a uh, comment regarding how these lessons are going to happen so I'm basically going to be providing videos for you guys like this one uh, I'm also going to be uh, using my website, arcolation.com, and I am going to be emailing you guys. And also, once the uh, school board's uh, Microsoft collaboration software uh, is working, then uh, we can also use that for uh, chats and like an online forum. So, and I also have one more surprise up my sleeve that I've been working on uh, pretty hard actually these last few days. And uh, I've finally done it. I'm very proud of myself. So, um, that's, that's part of why this lesson is what it is. It is on encryption. So let's begin. Um, some of you guys now, some of my intermediate or senior students may have had this lesson before, but it's a good review in any case because I know you guys probably may have forgotten about it. But let's begin with uh, the basics of encryption. Let me just make sure this video is uh, running. Yes, it is. Great. <clears throat> so, uh, let's begin with uh, two people. Now, usually, there's a very classic people we got to use, right? Uh, this is basically on every video you watch. There's always Bob and Alice. So, here's Bob. He's got three legs. And here's Alice. And if you, if Bob, say, for example, writes a document and wants to send it to Alice. The problem here is that if he locks it with a key, then Alice needs that, let's say for example it's a password. Well then Alice here needs that same key. So if the document comes to her, she's not going to be able to read it unless she has the key. So now it comes now comes the first problem is it's, it's like a catch-22. How do you send the key to Alice securely? So this is called symmetric encryption. Okay. But this is this doesn't work. This isn't going to work for us. Okay. This works in some situations, but for for us, we need something called asymmetric encryption. Okay, so that's not going to work. So let's let's move the thing up. So we still got Bob and Alice, and this time, uh, Bob and Alice are going to create or generate two keys. One key and then another key. Okay, One of them is going to be private and the other one's going to be public. And Alice does the same thing. Okay, So she generates two keys as well. A private key and a public key. Now, the private key 
you really want to be careful with that. You don't want anyone to have access to that. So this is really, um, you have to take care that it doesn't, you don't lose it or it doesn't get stolen. Okay. These two keys when they're created, the, the private and the public key, are mathematically linked together. Uh, such that you cannot derive the private key from the public key. But what's really cool about this situation is that you can distribute the public key everywhere around the world. And of course, most importantly in this case, to Alice. So now, Alice gets Bob's public key. And also, well, we'll go back to the vice versa situation, but for now, what does Alice do with Bob's public key? So one thing I gotta say is, you don't have to be uh, worried that your public key is going to get stolen or someone's going to find out what your public key is, <coughs> that's okay. You can totally let people see your public key. It's safe. But what does Alice do with this Bob's public key? Well, she can use this public key of Bob to take a, do a document or something and totally encrypt it to turn to make it into something that is totally garbled doesn't make sense okay so it's encrypted now with Bob's public key now if she deletes the original she will not be able to read this she will not be able to to decrypt it because there's only one key in the world that will be able to decrypt that document now. Once once the original is deleted, the um, this one, the encrypted copy, needs Bob's private key to decrypt. Okay? So, what does Alice do with this encrypted document? Well, she sends it. To Bob. And now Bob can decrypt it, the, the garbled message, into the original document using Bob's, which is his, private key. Now, that's the whole concept. And so, now of course you can do it vice versa, which basically means, you know, uh, Alice would send Bob her public key. So guess what? All of you guys, all of my students, I want your public keys. And so now I've got to tell you, how do you make your key pair? Well, for that, we're going to need to go to the terminal. And there it is. So right now, let's take a look in our .ssh folder. Well, guess what? We don't even have a folder called .ssh. Perfect. So you're, you're going to be doing this on your virtual machine. Okay? So, so follow carefully. This is super complicated. Ready? It's one command. It's called ssh-keygen, just like that. Now, when you hit enter, it's going to say, enter file to which to save. Don't change this, leave it as is. So simply hit enter. Then it's going to ask you for a passphrase. Now, what's the passphrase for? Well, it's so that for example, if your computer got stolen or if you're somehow a, a hacker was to break into your computer somehow and steal your private key, oh no, um, 
they'd still need the password to decrypt using symmetric encryption to decrypt your private key. However, I'm going to ask you, I know you guys who are really super security conscious, not gonna like this, but I don't want you to use a passphrase for this purpose that we're, that we're using. So I just simply want you to hit enter, okay? If you do this, you know, later in life and you're not comfortable using, uh, no, I, I don't, you know, for, for other purposes other than for this course, you can enter a passphrase. So basically every time you want to use your um, key, you'd have to type in your passphrase. But for me, uh, I'm actually going to be, um, before I accept your key, I have to. I want to be able to verify that it's a valid key, and so I, I'm not gonna know your passphrase. So I'm just gonna simply ask you not to type in a passphrase. Don't worry, it's still quite secure. So you're gonna hit enter now. Uh, what happens here is it will create a. This is the fingerprint, and that's like a picture of it. But if you notice right here, it says RSA two zero four eight. So it generated a 2048-bit RSA key, okay? That's the type of encryption it's using. Uh, it is much, 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 much better uh, than a password. Now for, okay, I guess I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag, uh, but I'm actually going to allow you guys to send me files and receive files from me. Now we're going to do this in a very, very efficient manner through my server. Now, in order for this to happen, uh, I need your public keys, which is what we're explaining right now. However, I know probably you guys, some of you guys might be thinking, well, Mr. Ark, why, why didn't you just uh, set up our old passwords that we had in class? Well, that's not safe. Those passwords are super short and password authentication is not nearly as secure as uh, public private keys. So let's take a look again in our SSH directory now and you will see, ta-da, it's a, it's, a, it's a hidden directory so if you just type in ls it doesn't really show up. Um, if you type in ls.ssh is a hidden directory. There you go. There's the two files. Now notice, if I go ll and I, you'll see that this one, the one that does not have the dot pub on it, that is my private key. I'm not going to be showing you that one. Okay. Notice also the permissions on it over here uh, are quite strict. Only I can see this. Nobody else can. On the other hand, my public key, well, look at that. It's, uh, it's readable by everybody. And most importantly, it's got the pub on it. So I want you to send me the, the one that ends in dot pub. Now, before you go ahead and send this to me, I'd like you to copy it and change the name. Okay, because I, I don't want everyone sending me a file called idrsa.pub. Uh, that's going to be too confusing for me to, uh, to rename and stuff. So I'm going to get ask you guys to rename it. Uh, by the way, just to let you know, please, uh, once you've sent me your, your public key, do not run this command again, because then you'll, you'll overwrite uh, yeah, you'll overwrite your, your private public keys and uh, then that you're not going to be able to to uh, log in and stuff and so that's that's not good um, well what do you what do I want you to call it so I want you to go copy and then um, go dot SSH ID dot pub. Now this is super important. Please don't forget the dot pub 
on that. If you send me your private key, this is not going to work and you will have <laughs> destroyed all of the integrity of your key pair. So now what I, what I want you to rename it to is your login name in my computer lab at school. So for example, uh, let's let me you know make up a fictitious one. If your login name was something like uh, uh, Bill, or well, actually, I think it starts with something else first, which uh, depends on what course you're in. I'm not going to put that here in the video because this is public. But uh, your username will begin with a few characters, and then you'll have your name. I can just, you know, call this one. Uh, Billy. Dot pub. Now, yours. Remember, don't put Billy. Put your username at school. Now you're gonna have to remember this. Okay, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that you can remember your username that you log into the classroom with. Okay, this is part of the security that I'm doing right now because I don't want you guys. I don't want, since anyone can view this video, I don't want people sending me stuff. Uh, plus, also, I'm not going to be uh, revealing my uh, email through this video, but uh, you're going to get an email from me, a reply to that one, okay? And attach the public. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's copy it. Notice where the spaces are. Okay, I'll I'll put even extra spaces so you know where the spaces are. Okay. So now when I do this, now I there it is. It's called Billy.pub. Now let's take a look at that. It's my public key, so I have no uh, reservation about showing you it. And there it is. Now notice this is a pretty long string and there's no way anybody on the planet is going to guess a 2048 bit uh, RSA public key or private key so I just want you to know this is way way safer than having passwords um, now how are you gonna send this to me easy all you're going to do is don't just send it to me, okay? I want you to specifically reply to the email that I send out asking for it. So you will get an email from me, uh, not from my school board one, from from a, from the other one, and it'll say, "Please re reply to this email and attach this file." So don't. Don't copy paste this. That's not what I'm looking for. I want you to attach it to the email. Okay. So if you if you've never sent email attachments, hopefully you haven't been living in a cave for the last ten years. Um, you know how to send an email attachment. Okay. And so once I get that, uh, in a few days, hopefully most of you will send it to me, and I will uh, send you another video most likely in the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow, and uh, explain to you guys how to log in and uh, you'll be able to upload and download files. Okay? So, um, let's see if I've forgotten anything before I end the video. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Well, I hope you're uh, staying safe. And uh, don't worry, I think uh, the, these uh, the online classes will get more interesting as we go along. But uh, we got to set up some infrastructure first to be able to uh, communicate properly. This is Mr. Ark, signing off. See you guys.